The recent sets Phantom Nightmare and Legacy of Destruction respectively debuted and introduced support for the Ashen archetype. Most Yu-Gi-Oh! content creators who covered this archetype have pointed out the similarities that suggest that the archetype is based on the Dark Souls game franchise, which was developed by From Software and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment. I'll be upfront, I've never played any of the Dark Souls series in any capacity, so I can only nod my head in agreement, knowing damn well that I know nothing about the franchise. And this isn't the only example, as even the older Vendred archetype was full of references to the Resident Evil franchise. But, the discussion of those similarities created quite the dilemma that I need answers to. Konami publishes far more intellectual properties than just Yu-Gi-Oh! They distribute massive titles like Metal Gear, Castlevania, and Silent Hill. Hell, they even own Frogger! The question at hand is why has Konami not integrated any of these other IPs into Yu-Gi-Oh? And I mean this to the extent of treatment that the Ashen Archetype received in their relation to the Dark Souls franchise and the full inspiration taken from Resident Evil for Vendreds. Castlevania does essentially have its own archetype in the most recent Vampire support, also incorporating a portion of the Skull Servants. But it appears to mainly base itself on aesthetic, as opposed to the actual functionality of the archetype relating to how the Castlevania games are played. We do also have a handful of cards that reference the other game titles that Konami owns, Gradius and the BES archetype are probably the largest example of Konami's video game titles being incorporated into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is a tragedy because they suck. But let's take the leap into Virtual World and explore these other huge game titles of Konami. The Silent Hill games are a series of psychological and survival horror that debuted in 1999, in which the protagonist fights through a monster-infested town in search of missing family, deceased loved ones, and more. The Silent Hill movie series loosely follows the storyline of the video games. Set in the fictional American town of Silent Hill, which aside from the monsters the player will soon discover, is shrouded in mystery, occult activity, alternate realities, and inexplicable phenomena. One of the most popular characters of the franchise is the Executioner, colloquially known as the Pyramid Head, who torments victims with acts of brute violence. While Silent Hill itself is a physical location, the town transports its victims to a state of limbo, between death and fate, and fate is decided upon by the actions of the player. This would make a fantastic basis for an archetype, and my first thought is a crossover between the original Different Dimension Monsters and Zombie Light Swarm. An archetype based around banishing monsters, then based on both players' game actions, those monsters return to the field or are put in the graveyard, symbolizing a second chance or death. I could see the monster lineup portraying the characters that find themselves in the Silent Hill and banish themselves along with the opponent's monsters they battle, or banish themselves along with another monster as an ignition effect. And I think an interesting play on the judgment aspect would be incorporating the monsters from Silent Hill, like Pyramid Head, Asphyxia, and Valtiel, into the back row of the deck, which gives the decision of fate based on certain actions being made. Like declaring an attack, activating a spell card, negating an effect, etc. Or these ideas could also be swapped to where the Silent Hill monsters are the deck's actual monsters and the victims are portrayed in the spell and trap cards, where your opponent battles the monsters and the victim back row determines the fate of your opponent. This could be a recreation which makes your opponent take on the role of the victim of Silent Hill's alternate reality. There is a lot of unexplored potential with the Silent Hill games, even on an individual basis that would work extremely well as an established archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! I just don't know why Konami hasn't really done anything with it. But it's not as though Silent Hill has never been referenced in this game. The design of Arcana Force X The Light Ruler is inspired by the Eye of Night, a Silent Hill 3 original tarot card. This tarot card is said to be a representative of the deity worshipped by the cultists, and the Light Ruler is described as the ultimate Arcana Force monster by Sartorius in the anime. The resemblance is uncanny. Along with the Gradius and BES cards, one of the well-known references to Konami's video game titles, specifically Metal Gear, comes in the form of Tactical Espionage Expert, an old effect monster that premiered in the booster set Rise of Destiny. And this monster's appearance is a likeness to Solid Snake's design in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. The Metal Gear series is a franchise of stealth and cinematic video games that debuted in 1987. 
Taking on the role of the popular characters Solid Snake or Big Boss, the player embarks on special operative stealth missions tracking down missing agents, rescuing hostages, facing terrorist organizations, and locating the titular Metal Gear, a doomsday bipedal tank with the ability to fire nuclear weapons. As the series would continue, even into 2024, with the tentative upcoming release of Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, new prominent characters would introduce opposition and support for Solid Snake, as well as the origination and new forms of the super weapon Metal Gear. The Metal Gear franchise is a bit interesting when looking at how to incorporate the storyline and gameplay into the strategy of an archetype because it's a fairly linear plot. That being said, I have a couple of ideas. My first thought was an archetype focus on a vanilla monster, that being Solid Snake of course, and his missions being integrated into the back row as continuous spell cards. Then I snap back to reality and remember that archetypes that focus on a single normal monster tend to be hot garbage. So, what I've ultimately come to believe would be the perfect fit for an archetype based on Metal Gear is Cosmo meets Invoked. I can already hear your groans of despair. Believe me, I gave myself cancer uttering that phrase, but walk with me on this road for a moment. Taking on the Invoked playstyle still allows us to solely focus on Solid Snake as the main deck monster. And although Solid Snake is still the main protagonist, he goes through several different alterations throughout the different installments of the game series. The extra deck would be a great tool to incorporate those changes by shifting Solid Snake into his different designs from the different games, with each having differing effects based on his abilities from those games. There could also be a mechanic, and I understand that I'm directly ripping off Neos and Gladiator Beast, that returns your extra deck forms of Solid Snake to the extra deck and resummons the base form. Just a cool addition that I think would be appreciated so we're not just playing Invoke Part 2. The Metal Gear itself is where I would implement the Cosmo playstyle. Fair warning, I'm entirely unfamiliar with the full strategy of Cosmo, but I know that they have some ships and pilots and one of them floats into the other or something like that. I'm probably misrepresenting their effects, but they seem to be as close to my idea as I can get. With the various extra deck forms of Solid Snake, I would have each of them milling a Metal Gear from the deck because there are several different forms of the super weapon they could either individually tie to a specific extra deck monster or just be generic. I would advocate for the latter. And if you choose to return to your base form of Solid Snake, you can special summon one of your Metal Gears from the graveyard, symbolizing you as Solid Snake having completed your mission. Depending on how those effects would be designed could potentially open up two different playstyles for the deck. One where you focus completely on the extra deck and just play as Solid Snake, and the second where you focus on completing missions, in a sense, to flood the field with your super weapons. The only aspect of the Metal Gear series that I haven't had much in the way of ideas for is how to include the different antagonists into the archetype. I suppose a lazy but still effective route would be to turn the villain's tactics into the deck's back row that are activated in response to your opponent performing certain actions, so we're basically treating our opponent as Big Boss. In similar fashion to Silent Hill, the individual games of the Metal Gear franchise would make a great addition to Yu-Gi-Oh! as a distinguished archetype. There are several different characteristics that could make for a unique playstyle and potentially lead us back to a very interactive game. When all is said and done, I propose these ideas because it feels like there isn't a ton of creativity or uniqueness that goes into designing each new top tier deck as far as the aesthetic and how those decks play. Every new archetype is almost exclusively flooded with waifus, omni negates, and break my board challenges. At the end of the day, we're going to play them regardless, but why not produce something that fans even outside of the Yu-Gi-Oh sphere can get excited about? I guess in a sense I've kinda answered my own question. But I've no doubt that a new meta-defining Silent Hill, Metal Gear, Adventure Island, or Zone of the Enders inspired archetype could easily push sales into a new set. Whether that's a core set, or even better, a competent deck builder set, fans of those franchises would support those collaborations with their hard-earned money. But that's going to wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. What is a Konami-branded video game title or other IP that you would want to see incorporated into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing off. Well, what about me? W what about you? Well, he said that Konami owns Frogger, so I figure we might talk about a Frogger archetype. We already...
we already have frogs in Yu-Gi-Oh. Why why would we need another frog? Well, it's just you said we're talking about the Konami game. Okay, sure. You want a frogger archetype? Go ahead and play frogs against any modern deck without playing totally awesome. Well, that doesn't sound very fun at all.